Hello and welcome to the tour video for QB2, the production model of the Q project, qproject.org.uk. Um, some of you will be familiar with QB1, which was our uh, first prototype cube. It was a genuine cube. It was a small, compact home, three meters by three meters by three meters on the inside, in which one person, or perhaps two rather friendly people, uh, could live a comfortable, modern existence with a minimum impact on the environment. Specifically, uh, QB1 was designed to be carbon neutral or energy neutral over the year. That is, in a typical year, it would generate as much energy as it would use, uh, using the solar panels on its roof and south side. Uh, QB2, of which is, this is the first example, is uh, being produced in response to the good reaction that we had to QB1, and it will be available for purchase in various forms that I will discuss later, with more information being on the website. Uh, but this is the first example of QB2, located here in currently sunny East Sussex, and uh, I'll show you the features. Uh, we think there's improvements over QB1, largely due to the fact that we've extended the cube by one metre. Uh, we didn't want to change it greatly, um, because the recipe uh, worked quite well on the first occasion, but we've now made it four meters by three meters in plan, so seen from above, and three meters still the internal height. So those are the internal dimensions, but we think that extra meter of length gives uh, a number of considerable advantages to QB2 over QB1, uh, and indeed we now think it's comfortable uh, modern existence for uh, one or two people. Uh, a couple, obviously. Um, so I'm going to give you a tour today of the, uh, of the QB2, and those of you that have seen the tour video for QB1 will recognize many of the features, but hopefully you'll also recognize many of the advantages that our new model enjoys. So um, I'll just go around to the inside and we'll pick up the tour from there. Okay, coming into the cube, QB2, coming in through this door, which is a passive house standard door with triple glazing and a passive house standard of construction. All the glazing, as with QB1, all the glazing in QB2 is triple glazed passive house standard glazing. So it's very efficient at uh, thermal insulation, but also very good sound insulation as well. So before we go any further, just to my right, there's a long cupboard here. In that cupboard is a washing machine and it could be a washer-dryer if you want, although that's perhaps not the most eco-friendly choice that you could make. Now, this one's a top-loading washing machine, a normal washing machine which would be somewhat lower than that. Uh, and above that, there's space for hanging coats and jackets. Um, and in fact, there'd be a little more space because the, the standard washing uh, machine would come in a little lower than the one we've got in there at the moment. So there's plenty of space for hanging coats and jackets in there immediately next to the door when you come in. And uh, as with the previous cube, we've got two meter head height throughout and no more than two meters anywhere in the cube. So all the volume of the cube is used. We've got a uh, cork flooring um, throughout, which is nice and warm, a nice insulator and a nice pleasant um, surface underfoot. So coming through to the, uh, the living area, which I'll show you in, in a moment, the living room, dining room area, we've got this single light switch, which operates three wall lights in this area, so you can turn them all off when you're going out without having to turn them off individually. But they do have individual switches on them as well, so you can have task appropriate lighting. These are dimmable LEDs, so LEDs are an extremely efficient form of lighting, and these ones are dimmable, but they're also all controllable with this switch here. Um, so uh, we think the lighting is uh, very appropriate uh, for the cube because you can have one, two or three lights on as you need. Now to my right here, as with QB1, but uh, slightly better still because of the increased volume that we've got now, we've got a very large storage space under the kitchen floor there, which is about one and a half meters square and one meter tall, and that's entirely unencumbered by uh, anything like water tanks and things. All the water tanks are over on the, um, the east side of the cube, uh, over on that side and run along that wall. So this is an entirely unencumbered storage space. So there's a huge volume of storage space under there which you can use as you wish. And um, unlike in QB1, the steps, which you'll see in the moment, have also got storage space in the side for books or whatever. Um, okay, so I'll now go over and show you a different perspective of the living area.
Okay, so here's a perspective of the living or dining area taken from the door now, and you'll see that we've got much more space than we had in QB1. We've got space enough now for a four or five seater table, and we've also got a two seater sofa with two more seats stored underneath the table in its current position. So as I say, much more space than in QB1. If I go and sit down here now, I've got a five, five and a half, almost six meter sight line up to the corner of the shower, which you'll see in the middle, uh, see in a minute. And uh, I've got a nice view out of this north facing window. So I'm never gonna get overheated or gonna get glare here. So there's a nice working light here, uh, particularly today. And uh, then I've got the two seater sofa. So if I'm sat here maybe with someone and we're, we're watching a little bit of telly, we can pull these chairs out put our feet up, I won't do it now because I've got my shoes on, put our feet up and relax. We can also um, put those back there. And if we want to do some work or have some people around for dinner or even just have a dinner ourselves, we can slide this out here and that just latches there. And then we've got our four stroke five seater table. We've got two seats there. We can put another one on the end for uh, having some people around to dinner or whatever, or just doing some work. It's at a nice height for doing some work. Uh, again, you'll see in the background the triple glazed window. This is a tilt and turn window like all the windows in the cube. So we can just tilt that back for a bit of ventilation. Or uh, if we wanted to get some large furniture in or something, we can actually swing the whole thing open if we wish. And all the windows have got Venetian blinds uh, or a roller blind in the bedroom. So we can actually angle those Venetian blinds so that we get light from the sky and total privacy from the ground level, which is a little bit lower than where we are. So you can get total privacy whilst maintaining all of the light. Um, so we can just slide that back, which gives us slightly more um, floor space in the cube, and we can store the seats under if we wish. Okay, just coming over just before we go up the stairs to point out that we've got here the uh, ventilation grills for the heating system, cold air sinks obviously, and so uh, air is drawn in here. It goes through uh, essentially what is a car radiator, if you like, and warm air comes out of the top. All the heat for, for that heating system is provided by the external unit of the air source heat pump, the Ecodan air source heat pump that we've got with the cube, which I'll show you on the south wall when we go round to the outside towards the end. And finally, as we just come up a bit here, we've got the uh, TV, which is the same TV as we used in QB1. That's an LED TV, a very efficient form of television, which only uses about 45 watts even when it's, uh, when it's on and, and being used. So uh, that's a very efficient form of TV, much more efficient than the old cathode ray tube or a plasma TV. Okay, so we'll move to the upstairs now, and uh, I'll just show you, as I showed uh, the people who saw the QB1 video, the uh, space-saving staircase that we have in the cube, and then I'll show you the features upstairs. Okay, I'm going up the stairs, left foot first, as it was for QB1. The space-saving stairs saves a lot of space by having only alternating treads. Okay, here we are upstairs in QB2, and I'll show you the bathroom area uh, first, the toilet and bathroom area, uh, which is considerably improved relative to QB1. We have an extra meter of uh, space now, and that makes a big difference. So going into this area, we have a folding door here, which allows you to swing this door closed without trying to take your nose off here. So we can just swing it close like that. And then you've got privacy from the rest of the cube uh, because the door latches onto this wall as well. Good, so now we're in the bathroom. The bathroom is a galley bathroom. It's four meters long and uh, 80 centimeters, 800 millimeters wide. Gives us a lot more space than we had in QB1, as I said. We've got a cupboard at the end and we've got a composting loo, which we haven't set into the floor yet, but that's a composting loo. You could choose to have a, a normal toilet if you wish. Um, We've got LED lighting in here again, one light uh, if you want to have a read while you're sitting on the toilet, and uh, one light here which lights the wash basin. We have a nice wash basin here with a uh, resting place for your toothbrush and your tooth mug and what have you. There's a cupboard at the end there, a mirrored cupboard. We also have a mirror here for people who uh, need to beautify themselves or do their shaving or whatever. So we've got much more space here than we had. QB1 didn't have the sink. So that's a, a significant improvement that is afforded us by the extra space. We've got light from the window here as well. And uh, I'll show you in a moment how we can set the Venetian blinds so that we get privacy in the bathroom. Looking at the bathroom from the other end now, uh, being filmed from the toilet end, we've got the sink here in the mirror. And we've got the full size shower there, 800 millimeter uh, square. And that's got a nice low flow thermostatically controlled shower in it. 
um, which is a nice energy saving low flow feature there. And we also have this long window which gives you a lot of natural light in here. You might be concerned that there's a lack of privacy, but because we're a meter off the ground now, plus a bit more um, for the space under the cube, we can actually set these Venetian blinds so that we still get the light in from the sky, but I can't be seen at all now from, the, uh, from anyone standing on the ground outside. So we have total privacy whilst maintaining light. And we've also got LED lighting in the shower anyway um, for, for, for when it's dark. So we've uh, got a much better arrangement, we think, now for QB2 over QB1. Uh, shower at one end, toilet at the other, a nice wash basin in between, and uh, plenty of space for a comfortable bathroom, which is sealed off uh, or cut off from the rest of the cube for privacy, uh, so it's perfectly suitable for two people to share this space. Okay, now we're leaving the bathroom area. We just fold that back and bring the door closed as before. So the loo is now cut off from the rest of the cube but the light is now available to us. Okay, here we are in the uh, kitchen area of the cube, uh, very much similar to um, the kitchen area of QB1, identical effectively. We've got uh, plenty of storage, kitchen storage, with lots of cupboards and what have you, standard kitchen units. We have a recirculating cooker hood, which uh, cleans the air through this charcoal, charcoal filter here, a very efficient uh, German unit and uh, we have a, an induction hob, as we did for QB1, which has got four um, plates, and that will heat the pan that's placed on it without getting hot itself. So that's a very efficient form of uh, electrical um, hob cooking, but also a very safe form, because if you take the pan off, it turns itself off, there's no naked flames or anything like that. A very efficient fridge with a small freezer box at the top for your ice cream and frozen peas. And then uh, this time, unlike QB1, I've remembered to put the microwave and circotherm combination oven in here. So that is both a, a, a conventional oven and a microwave oven, both very energy efficient, but also very practical. Um, because we don't have the heating unit up here, the heating unit's been moved to downstairs. We've got much more space up here relative to QB1. We've got uh, two storage shelves. You can arrange this as you like. And a work surface here, which spreads out and uh, you can put your toaster and your kettle on there. There's uh, um, electrical sockets and all that's got task lighting again from this LED wall light here. So direct lighting there. Then we can carry on. We've got a bookshelf in here, by the way, which you perhaps can't see from your... Uh, there we are, we're just moving around a bit. We've got a bookshelf there for your cookery books. And then we're, um, as with QB1, we're up, going forwards now, into the bed, to the bed area. Again, a significant improvement over QB1, um, because the bed has been turned around. We've now got room for a full-size double bed here. This is uh, 2 meters long, or 2 meters 10 long, by 1 meter 40 wide. So it's a full-size double bed. And uh, those of you that know QB1 will notice we've got a new window in the corner. So you can, um, at the head end of the bed, you can look out and enjoy the lovely Sussex scenery, at least when it's placed here. And that also provides you with an extra um, fire exit, should you be concerned about there being a kitchen fire or whatever uh, during the night, you can easily swing that open. It's a fully opening window and you can just uh, drop down very, very easily uh, onto, the, onto the ground outside. So that gives you a little bit of extra reassurance. The other advantage is now the bed going in, in this direction, QB1 had the bed going in this direction, we've got no um, problem going up and down the stairs or banging your head, and so the stairs can actually be entirely removed from the kitchen area. We've also got greatly enhanced storage space um, along the side of the bed there, um, and that gives you about five meters of shelving. Uh, all the shelving is uh, 60 centimeters deep. So there's a considerable amount of uh, storage space there alongside the bed. And at the head of the bed, there's two LED reading lights um, and there's a plug socket at there for your uh, clock radio or whatever. And, and there's a, a roller blind, not a Venetian blind, which would have got in the way a bit. We've got a roller blind on that window at the head of the bed. So it's a very pleasant arrangement for uh, one or two people to sleep in QB2. Um, okay, so now we'll move to the outside of QB2 and I'll just show you some of the features of the outside and then we'll have concluded our tour. Okay, coming round to what will be the south side of the cube, QB2, in its normal orientation. 
I'll just show, show you some of the features of the south side. The most prominent feature is this, which is the external unit of the air source heat pump. An air source heat pump passes air with this fan uh, through uh, a heat exchanger, and that, is, that provides all the heat for the hot water and in the winter for the heating system of the cube. It's a very efficient form of heating, although it's powered by electricity, it's three times more efficient, energy efficient, than a standard electric heater like a fan heater or an immersion heater in a tank of water. So that's a very efficient form of heating. Uh, it's a Mitsubishi Ecodan air source heat pump. And uh, in the UK at least, that will be uh, incentivized, we believe, uh, with an incentive payment for renewable heat under the renewable heat incentive. Well, that announcement hasn't been made yet, but that is anticipated. So that's an extra advantage of using this form of heating. Um, just looking at what will be the east side of the building in its normal uh, orientation, we have the long window um, from, uh, in the bathroom there, and you can see that you can't see up into the bathroom, so there's an element of privacy there. Uh, particularly when the Venetian blinds are angled in the way that I suggested uh, earlier. And that will give you a view of the sky from the bathroom, but no one can see in, giving you, as I say, an element of privacy. Uh, the other thing I want to note while we're around the south side is the width of the cube uh, when it's being transported. That width is just under 3.5 metres. 3,500 millimetres, and that is, uh, makes it practical for towing behind a, a vehicle or placing on a vehicle um, without too stringent restrictions on, uh, for escorts and things like that. So that's deliberately the, uh, the case that it's uh, just less than 3.5 metres wide. Finally, um, in its normal orientation, and when we have it in a permanent position, we will have the solar panels, which provide uh, most of the power for the cube, or all of the electrical power for the cube, on average over the year. Um, the solar panels will be able to be hoisted from here onto the cube uh, without having to use a crane or a ladder or anything, using a mechanism which we will show on the website we've designed specifically for the cube. And uh, those solar panels will go over the roof at an angle of 10 to 15 degrees, but there will also be an overhang here going out to about here where there'll be fixed, uh, a leg fixing them to the ground. And that will give you a sort of lean-to on the south side where you can enjoy a picnic in the shade in the summer or in the sun in the winter when the angle of the sun is different. And uh, you could also park your electric vehicle under there and you'll be essentially charging your electric vehicle directly from the solar panels above. So that's, a, 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 we think, a, a neat feature. It, it, this demountable solar panel system means that you can quickly demount them if you want to transport the cube, or if there's a hurricane brewing up and you'd like to take the solar panels down because they're angled up, um, you, you could quickly do it, lay them along the floor, and then hoist them back up again. We'll show that mechanism on the website. So that uh, concludes our little tour of QB2, uh, the production version of the cube project. Um, being a production version, we are intending to uh, make um, various versions of QB2 available for purchase uh, with our collaborators, Bolton Buildings, and they will be available at various levels, everything from a kit form, which you can put together essentially yourself with a, a minimum of uh, expertise and tools, all the way up to a fully fitted building um, with all the features that you've seen today. So do go onto the website, www.cubeproject, or one word, .org.uk and uh, we will give you more information about those uh, pricing and, and the availability of kits and buildings uh, as soon as those are available, which will be soon. Uh, thank you for watching uh, this tour of QB2, the Cube Project.